ハレルヤハレルヤハレルヤハレルヤハレルヤハレルヤ God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about along the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst and putting his arms around it, said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. The Gospel of Christ. Good morning, everybody. As we are entering the church with the deacon, I told him, I said, Deacon, I wish you, you are preaching this Sunday. And he says, why? I told him, it's like same thing. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, last Sunday, the gospel was more of Jesus deal with these disciples. And the same thing is like happening in the same gospel. So in other words, through, this, through last Sunday and today's gospel, we see that continuity, but Jesus giving more time to be with his disciples, especially apostles, for purpose of one, leading them into prayer, being with them and praying together. But the second one, and the most important is trying to help them to understand his mission. His idea of son of man suffering, being put to death and will rise, keeps recurring, and then he goes on. And likewise, this Sunday, we exalt Jesus Christ, the son of God, the one the first reading calls wisdom. That wisdom that came down from heaven to serve humanity and the church invites us all to listen to him and to follow him and to follow his examples by living this orderly and peaceful life and that is what he calls his apostles to when Jesus begins explaining about his suffering death and resurrection, the disciples and the apostles kind of could not get it well. And that's why Jesus picks on that and is trying to explain to them. Because some of them had a different understanding of Jesus himself. Like last Sunday when he asked them, he said in the gospel, who do people say I am? They were very quick to give answers. Some say you are Moses. Some say you are Elijah, one of the prophets, the greatest prophets that has come. But when he says, what about you? Who do you say that I am? They could not give him an answer because 
they could not relate personally who Jesus is for them, and it is Peter that rescues them by saying, you are the Christ, son of the living God. And again today, when he talks about his suffering, death, and resurrection, instead of trying to understand what Jesus truly means by that, they were like discussing instead and quarreling among themselves as to who is the greatest. And that's why Jesus asked them when they get together, say, what were you discussing about? Because he knew what they were saying. And this is what they were discussing, that who among them is the greatest. They had that struggle for power. Instead of looking at Jesus, going back to the Father and commissioning them to take charge by what he's saying, some were looking for these favors and who could take charge, who would now be among them and struggling for that position because they thought that was a position and place of honor. Jesus in the two quotations, the two texts, is trying to correct that mentality from them when he says, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. And that is what he tells them. It is, in other words, it is not to be serve, in serving that you become great, but it is in service that you become great. And that is what he asked of his, of his, his uh, apostles. The one who wants to be great should be that servant of all. And that is the mission that he came for, that he died for, by being of service and a servant to all. And that is what he asked of them, instead of seeking for these places of honor and what have you, as the rabbis and uh, the hypocrites were doing in the synagogue, in the marketplaces, and in all other places. So Jesus is correcting that mentality and pointing to this mission of service, love that comes and is based on service that can eventually bring greatness as far as one is concerned, as far as discipleship is concerned. And he again links this to this idea of the child when he says again, one who else comes this child welcomes me and the one who receives me receives not just me but the one who has sent me and Jesus brings in this idea of childlike to the disciples and the apostles because a child represents those who do not count the one who owns nothing the one who needs help the one who depends on others, the one who does not produce anything and only uses things, that one, because of that being a child, at times is careless and reckless and therefore needs that parent attention, needs that family attention to watch over and all the time. And that is what he brings in, that that should be their responsibility to reach out to that child. In other words, to reach out to those who own nothing, those who need our help, those who cannot depend on themselves, those who have nothing to produce, and those who want to reach out to God, and we are to be that instrument. And that is what he points again to these apostles and corrects this mentality by directing them to move towards this child in terms of receiving him and seeing the face of Christ. And that is what he calls them and calls us to. In other words, that quality of the child is what should bring the attention to. 
to those who need our service, call to make sacrifice for others through service and the way of expression of our love for God. St. James always says, you cannot pretend to love God when you do not, rather you cannot pretend to love God whom you do not see, yet you do not love your neighbor whom you see. And this is made possible in service that he calls the disciples to and calls us to. And the church gives us different opportunities to do this, be it through the Catholic strong, be it through the house of charity, be it through St. Vincent de Paul, and all other means that God exposed these people to us so that we become his face to these people. And it is in this that we become great. It is in this kind of service that we make our discipleship. So we pray that the invitation of Jesus may take root in our hearts as we respond to him in love by this kind of service, just as he has called on his disciples and the apostles. The church today, at this weekend, like today, has given us throughout the diocese this script 